So you've been out purchased your caravan and someone's told you that you need to tick some boxes on maintenance to make sure your warranty is upheld. Basically, I have had nothing but disappointment from those that provide maintenance to caravans. If it wasn't for ticking those boxes, I'd have probably done most of it myself. So most of these places you go to, I don't think they have a lot of technical expertise. And here's a couple of things I've found. Last time we got the van serviced, we had an issue where the three-way fridge wasn't running on gas. We just couldn't get it to fire up. Explained it very clearly, went through it, left the van there for a couple of days. Theoretically, they were to look at brakes, not wheel alignment, whatever else, whatever ever other boxes needed to be ticked. We got to pick the van up. Uh, yeah, yeah, we fixed the, the, the fridge. It was fine, we didn't have to do anything. We hooked it up over the weekend and it got down to minus 20. And immediately I thought, Jesus Christ, something's wrong here. So I get it home, try to fire up the gas, and of course it won't fire up. And bear in mind, I'd paid, oh, I, think they, I think they stung me 1100 bucks. So I have a bit of a look on YouTube, which has some really good stuff, has some really average stuff, and has some really bad stuff. Fortunately, I found someone that knew what they were talking about. Half an hour later, I'd fixed it. Should have gone back and chased my, some of my 1100 bucks, but couldn't have been bothered. So as I've done in life with everything, let's just break it down into the basics of what you've got. So you've got brakes. And realistically, I do brakes myself. However, are they going to accept me without being a ticketed mechanic signing off on the brakes for warranty purposes? Probably not. You've got wheel alignment and different suspensions will require different requirements. It's not part of a warranty requirement. And I've done a couple myself on this one. Not hard once you get your head around it. You've got your wheel bearings, of course. Always carry a couple of wheel bearings. And uh, I just happen to have a little bearing puller, they're not too difficult to change. And the one thing I do if I'm changing a wheel bearing is replace the jack. You've got to jack it up obviously, but make sure I've got some chocks or jack stands under there, just in case something lets go. The other thing I carry, and I just haven't got it here at the moment, is one of those laser pointer temperature devices. Make it easy and quick to walk around, check all the temperatures at the end of your axles on the car and the van, what temperature should it be? Don't know, but you'll get a feel for it. If three are 40 and one's 80, I'm suggesting something's happening at the 80 degrees one. It's a part of the annual or six monthly or, or whatever, depending on how, how many kilometers you're doing, is to repack those wheel bearings, get that old grease out, pack some new wheel bearing grease in there. Important to make sure you've got the right grease. It won't just be normal, standard, general purpose every day. Grease, well, I'm not even sure what that is anymore. There's that many different types of greases out there. So if you're not comfortable with doing that, best get someone in to do it. It shouldn't cost a lot to repack some wheel bearings. While, while you're in there or while your representative's in there, he should be able to see if there's been any excess heat. Bearings color up a little bit, get a little bit brown if they're, if they're hot. And similarly, the grease will demonstrate a burnt characteristic. But wheel bearings, pretty important. Could hold you up for a fair while. You've got your gas requirements, which requires a gas fitter. So you'll need someone ticketed for that. And some 12 volt electrics. And maybe you've got to replace a hood or that type of thing. Again, not too complex. So that's the way I'll be going from here forward. Doing most of it myself. If I'm not comfortable with the brakes, I'll get someone to come and do it. You got a couple of grease points under there as well. If you've got elliptical springs, you'll have some shackles to grease. Checking shock absorbers, not too complex. Having a look at your wiring, not too complex. So when I break it down to the base levels, there's not too much there. Even throwing a bit of slastic around joints, not too complex. Changing a pump, again, I do that myself. However, some people might not be, and I don't find myself that handily inclined, but these things are really basic. But some people mightn't like to do that. What I try and do is find a mechanic that can do the brakes and have a look at all those undershaft, un underneath bits, shock, shock absorbers, shackles if you've got elliptical springs, that type of thing. You don't really need a plumber for too much. It's, there's nothing nothing earth shattering in the, in the plumbing. The other thing I expected them to do was grease things. And thank goodness I took some grease to Tasmania. I was uh, winding the legs down there one particular day and I thought, gee, that sounds dry. So I just popped the caps, no grease in the little bevel gear. So I filled that myself. When we got home, I checked the invoice, been charged for it. So very disappointed. As one bloke said to me, you know, they're just 
ordinary people like you and me in there doing these jobs it's just nothing there's no technical requirement obviously no supervision either obviously no no procedures and structures in checking and ticking stuff off so those things are disappointing and i'll just approach that a little bit differently as i move into the rest of the caravanning journey